We back. Act 2, the podcast, episode 19. How we doing out there, people? Episode 19. It's your boy, Walt, in the house. International Walt. And... Your girl, Taj, the co-hostess with the mostest. She got the most. Damn. I don't know if she's been giving it out lately, but she got the most. Um, <laughs> um, hey, y'all. What's up? Um, we back. Episode 19. Again, another week. Um, another opportunity to come to y'all and talk. This month is <clears throat> Mental Health Awareness Month. I had to slow down and say that because you try to say it fast, you fuck up. But it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And just want to start off by saying um, to people out there, um, if you got any type of mental health issues going on and you can uh, talk to somebody, you should do that. Um, ASAP. So just wanted to leave with that. Anybody out there with mental health issues, if you can talk to somebody, talk to somebody ASAP. My wow and well. Yes. <laughs> um, my wow of the week, well, I guess since our last episode, we had a celebration of love. Um, one of my friends, my bestest friends, uh, since we were 13, is getting married and she had an engagement party. I know we talked about this a few um, oh, last episode. No, not the last episode. We talked about when they first initially got engaged. Then we talk about oh where we was going. I don't think so, but okay. anyway, we went. It happened, the engagement party. And it was nice. It was beautiful. Just celebrating and it, like I um of course she's my friend. Um she's my sister, you know, anybody seeing somebody that you love being loved and in love it's a beautiful thing so that was you know a beautiful moment that was a happy moment uh you know it, it was it was nice it was a nice time me and my baby got dressed up got a chance to go um mask it was a I, I, I more than a year later i don't know how i still forget to take a mask i know what do you know she she you know she you don't know nothing she, you know. We, we we had to find parking park like three blocks away okay no problem my shoes wasn't walking shoes but we you know we made it there and then we get to the door and it's like i don't have no mask so we had to go back to the car then come back to the place but nevertheless it all worked out and we had a good time and it was a good it was and to piggyback on what she said it was cool to see um her friend jay and her fiance donovan um the, it, it's cool to see black love and it's cool to see um I know how much I love my wife, so it's cool to see, you know, um, another man, like, you know, he, he cares about Jay, and I know they got a kid together, and it's just cool to see that, like, he, he, he seemed like he dug in, and um, the fact that when she appreciated him for asking her to be his wife, I thought that was dope. Like, yeah. Because, you know, the men never get, you know, a, nothing alone to ride, you know, you ask your woman to marry you, and then t things turn over to them, and you try to have a little input, but just to have that acknowledgement from her, and I'm, she wasn't even talking to me, but it just <laughs> it made me smile. Like, damn, like, you know, you really feel that, that that way. Like, you know, and it's special when a man asks you to be his wife. It, it really is. Um, we said last week, one out of four women, black women in our culture get married. So one out of four. So line up 100 women, and every fourth one get married, and the others just not. That's just the, the stats. Yeah, that's not that's not a good statistic. And you know, it's it's one of those things where um, I've seen I've seen something circulating that said, "I pray that everyone gets to experience being loved properly in their life." Right. And being loved properly can look different for different people. You know, we talked about love languages and all that kind of stuff. What somebody needs. You know, in terms of being loved, may look completely different than what you or I need or what you need. Um, but when you come together and you find a mate and y'all are able to establish what that looks like for you, it's just a beautiful thing. And I, I, I love love and it's, it's, you know, it's nice. I'm excited. You know, it's where, you know, I'm at, at this stage of, um, you know, as you get older and like, just, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Did I knock it out your hand? Yeah, you saw that, right? I'm she so sorry. My doobie out my hand. I'm so sorry. All she right, like my... John Gennetti. She talked with her hands. Like, who's going to know who that is? He just threw that out there. Um, My woe of the week. 
so you know in in all transparency in light of it being mental health awareness month um you know sometimes we come to points in our life at, as he started out the show and mentioning you know if you if, if you experience mental health issues and you're going through something talk to somebody but some I, I think it's very important that we are always in tune with ourselves and how we feel so in saying if you experience men experiencing mental health issues doesn't mean it has to be something diagnosed you may not know what you're feeling no i wanted it, i wanted it to to be be broad because there's mm -hmm. a lot under that umbrella and i knew we were getting into a lot right. more as the show went on so but i just wanted to make that statement like a um proclaimer disclaimer disclaimer yeah that if you have mental health issues if it's tangible for you to talk to somebody do so and, and like he said it's, it is broad because having mental health issues can, again can look different for different people mm -hmm. you know how you feel and when you feel different, acknowledge that. Don't just try to brush it under the rug because it can manifest itself in different ways. You know, you can laugh, you can, you know, some, not to laugh or be funny, but you know, somebody, you get into a little small fender bender or something and you go berserk and go crazy because you've been suppressing all of these feelings and it, you know, it's bubbling up inside of you. It turns into rage. So, you know, not, not to belabor the issue of the topic. I just wasn't really feeling like myself. And, you know, it was a scary feeling and, and knowing who you are and feeling outside of that. And it just was a scary feeling. So that was a whoa moment for me and realizing, like, there was nothing specific that I could pinpoint, you know. Life isn't perfect for anybody, but my marriage is great. Thank God. You know, I don't have any sick family members. Thank God. My babies are healthy and happy. Thank God. My sisters are progressing in life and doing the things. My friends are awesome. So it was really, my job is awesome. You know, our finances are straight. Our, you know, we're healthy. So it was really nothing that I could pinpoint, but I just knew that I wasn't feeling like myself. And, you know, we've had some conversations and trying to you know, kind of decide where those feelings came from. But it was a scary moment for me. I'll sneak in an additional while um, because it felt good to have a partner that I could talk to. And I immediately thought to myself, like, let me express this to him. Like, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm just not feeling like myself. And it, it was scary, but it felt good. It kind of backfired a little bit, and we'll get into that. But it was scary, but it felt good. And I'm sorry, y'all. My allergies, my nose is itching. But she ain't it, on the butter. <laughs> no, I, I don't do no drugs, so All my right, nose so is itching. So don't be thinking like, you know, he up there and she on drugs and shit to no. do the show. She it's got a allergies. Snort. feel like critters are crawling on she me. She ain't on the butter. But it felt good to be able to to have someone in my life that I could communicate that to. And, you know, and I'll, and again, and I'll be transparent. Um, you know, I was, I kind of mentioned it a little bit to my sisters and they, and not everybody, and this includes my husband, not everybody always knows what to say. And sometimes there really isn't anything to say, but just being there for people. I even mentioned, um, you know, um, to, uh, uh, one of my friends, um, and we really, it, it just was good to be able to have people to, to feel like you can confide in, even when you don't know what's wrong. So that was like another while for me. It was good being able to um, just say, babe, I'm not feeling like myself. And that right. was that. So that was my wow, that was my wow and my woe and my wow again of the week. So you snuck in a wow. I snuck in so a wow. So next week she ain't going to have a wow. She's <laughs> going to have a wow. What was your wow and woe of the week? My woe would be first is my wife didn't feel well. So that's a, a dark, dark woe for me. Like I can't, this might be a shame to say it, but my soul is intertwined with hers and I can't function if she's not right. And that has been great for our life because we're 90% of the time we're great. But for those times that we not, I, I can't function like I can't go to work and think straight knowing that she not right I can't um I can't laugh I can't joke I can't have sex I can't do anything it's it's sort of crippling for me and I think that's the detriment part where being so in love and so tied to somebody can be a detriment in that sense because 
I know you need me to be strong and there for you and but sometimes that that worrying about you breaks me down sometimes I mean sometimes I can most of the time I can handle it but sometimes when not knowing what's wrong with you yeah that if I know what's wrong with you then I know how to handle it I know how to approach it I know how to fix it I know what you need but when I don't know what's wrong with you then yeah I'm sort of sort of feels like you're in limbo a little bit so for me that I don't that's that's that was a, 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 a woe for me if we being totally transparent and we are um my wow is that she's feeling better <laughs> so that's that's a wow for me I'm I'm here I'm doing the show we here so that's a plus um if she wasn't we wouldn't be here um so the fact that she's here and 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 doing the show and where uh she's smiling and I'm smiling and we've been smiling all day so she's been feeling better since the weekend and you know regardless of what else that happens in my life that's that's the that's the wow and just to piggyback on what she was saying when people have um different feelings and feel like they're not themselves and it's outside of that and i just thought about this so it's like a wow moment because that doesn't necessarily have to be negative it doesn't necessarily have to be mental health it could just be growth it could be um just you f changing or feeling different about things that's happened around you um we have been going through uh, a struggle in in society the last 18 months mm -hmm. so that weighs on people people are working from home for the last 18 months and although we've gotten through it t together and and still you know still manage to be whole it it still affects us you know what i'm saying it still affects us because life has changed yeah so it alters the things that we used to do it alters the way that we used to move um and you know we try to find our comforts where we can but you know if we're being honest even the people who so-called made it through the pandemic it still can be damaging in some sort you're still gonna have a little bit of of PTSD so but just to say like just because you feel different and um, and and you can't figure it out don't necessarily think it's negative because it just could be your thoughts rearranging themselves it could just be you changing the way you process things and think um, now if you know it to be negative then address that but if it's not just because you feel different just because your mind is thinking different don't automatically think oh my god something's wrong with me right you know just try to figure it out try to pinpoint what it is try to calm down and and go from there but don't just think uh, just because you feel different inside or your body feels different or your mind feels different that it's negative because you could be changing for the good you could be changing for the better after all you don't know yeah and i think you know we, we there's a lot of talk about self-love self-care that kind of thing i think one of the most com important components of self-care for me is no yes you will grow and you should always be growing and evolving i believe but knowing who you are and being in touch with yourself so that you can kind of compartmentalize when you're having those feelings like uh, uh, you know not that i care what anybody think um, you know, I know people go through mental health issues and they have negative thoughts and they have like suicidal ideations. That was not my situation at all. <coughs> um, but, you know, I just wasn't feeling good. So I think one of the most important things when we talk about self-care is knowing self. Like, was it that? Was it the what you just said? Was it I feel bad or I feel different? And was, I don't know what it is. Or was it, no, this is a bad feeling? It wasn't a bad feeling per se, but it wasn't a good feeling. You know how like, you know how like if you're catching a cold and you be like, I just don't feel good. It was kind of one of them things like I'm not like I know I wasn't catching the cold. It's not that same feeling. But when you say like, I just don't feel good, like 
I, I, I can't pinpoint it. I don't know what it is, but I just don't feel good. I don't, you know, and, you know, we, we kind of talked through it or whatever, but it was just that, like, not I feel bad. I just don't feel good. I don't feel like myself, mm -hmm. not in a sense of, you know, you cannot feel like yourself and feel confused. You cannot feel like yourself and feel, you know, extra stress. It For me, it was... Extra fatigue. Yeah, I just didn't feel... I just didn't feel good. And it was one of those moments where, you know, it, it makes you stop and look at yourself and think, like, who, I'm, who am I to think that I am... Um, uh, What's the word that I'm looking for? You know, other people are impacted by issues. Who am I to think that I'm above? Exempt. exempt yes. Who am I to think that I am <coughs> exempt? because we've been together for so long. Yeah, he can read my mind. Who am I to think that I am exempt from going through things? Like, I know there are people who have serious mental health diagnoses, whether it be bipolar disorder or manic depressive disorder. Schizophrenia. Multiple personality disorders. You know, severe anxiety. I know there's a plethora of diagnoses that people have, and I'm I'm not imposing any of those thoughts on myself. But again, who am I to think that I'm exempt from ever having to experience any issues and just go through life, you know, being okay? And I think that's a problem, too. We always just want to say we're okay. And we talked about that, you know, asking people, how are you? You know, and like, no, like, really, how are you? Really trying to... Make sure that the people that you care about really are okay. And I think for myself sometimes, I'm an older sibling. Um, you know, I'm an aunt. I'm a wife. I'm a, the oldest daughter. Well, being the oldest sibling, I'm the oldest daughter. I think she said that first. Duh. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, I didn't mention daughter. I just mentioned sibling. Um, you know, I think I, I tried to be a good friend. So I say all that to say I'm... I wouldn't say I'm an A-type personality, but I'm more of a leader, a, 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 a play a leadership role in my life. You're a B-type personality, but B-type personalities have leaderships. Okay. Well, I, I don't know all the you know, logistics of that. Okay. You're not an alpha female. Okay. Needless to say, um, I, I think I play like that leadership role or the strong friend, for a lack of better words. I'm always that person that, you know is strong and want to be there for people and help people out and sometimes you have to just take a step back and like we had a moment where he was saying you know you're this for that you're this for this person you this for that person you this for that person and sometimes it's like i don't want to be nothing for nobody i want to be natasha for natasha whatever that looks like and not saying ever but in that moment like i don't want any other titles attached to me because sometimes that load can be heavy like it's and, and again i i appreciate that those other roles in my life don't come with any stress like you know oh my god my nose is itching <laughs> thank god you know my 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 marriage and my husband is doing well he's been having some back problems but my marriage and my husband is doing well so being a wife is not a stressful role in of itself you know the laundry and stuff that goes along with it but being a wife in of itself isn't stressful my sisters are doing well they've experienced some things in their life where i've had to really step up and i've stressed about them when they're going through stuff but thank god that hasn't been the story right now like i mentioned my kids my nieces and nephews they're healthy so that so none of those roles thank god have been stressful you know my mom i was a little worried about her but things are fine so none of those roles have been stressful per se but still, sometimes it's like, okay, I'm this for that person. I'm this for that person. I'm this. And I'm doing this to say, like, these are all the badges or hats that I wear. And it's like, take all that off of me. Like, I just want to be me for me. I don't want to be nothing for nobody else right now. Like, let me just worry about me. And I, I don't know if that was, you know, part of it. I feel much better, but we're still talking it out. And I appreciate, not that he's a mental health professional, and I'm not opposed to seeking mental health services if I felt it was when I do, not if, but when I do feel it's necessary. But I'm appreciative for having somebody in my life who is my best friend that I can talk through these things. Because some stuff you can't figure out. And again, he's not a professional. If I felt like, nah, this thing working, I need to talk to somebody else, I will do that. But that was, you know, I'm saying all this to say know yourself. And be able to really sit with yourself and be honest with yourself, too. It's okay to say, I don't take all that off of me. I don't want all that pressure right now. I want to mm -hmm. worry about myself. I want to take care of myself. 
that's okay to do that that's part of self-love that's part of self-care if your cup is empty you can't pour it into nobody else so and, and talking to her about that we that that to me when i hear that it's um it's two things number one i'm gonna doctor you a little bit right now even though i'm not a doctor <laughs> People therapize but you me. see all the things that she said she is and all the hats that she says she wears she is and she's a she's a dope woman she do all that for everybody but it's too much like all that stuff she said that's not stressful the fact that she named all them things is stressful so in in certain instances you just got to create boundaries whether it be um well you know i'm gonna knock down your boundaries mm -hmm. but <laughs> it be with the people that you love and care for that don't mean that you don't love them or don't care for them but you can't help them if you're not helped. You can't help them if if you're not right. So you got to have some kind of boundary where you know, you don't you don't you, you don't need to engage in everything. You don't need to be in everything. And th those moments where you're not engaged in everything and you feel like that, use that time for yourself and use that time for your thought process whether they want to be sitting in a room whether you want to be meditating, taking a shit, and just be in peace, like whatever it may be, use that time for yourself. And um, I can do better at recognizing when you need time for yourself because, again, we are in the house together. We are trapped in the house. Not trapped because we find our comforts where, you know, where we we get in where we fit in. And um, what we think is comfortable for us is the things that we do. So I say that to say that, you know, create boundaries, um, healthy boundaries, not not negative boundaries. And people hear that word and think it's a negative connotation, like you don't fuck with people. No, I fuck with you wholeheartedly. But when I need a reset, I need a reset. Mm -hmm. And I need y'all to understand that and let me reset. And then I'm back wholeheartedly again, just like we never skipped a beat. But when I say, I don't wanna hear that or I'm, I'm tuned out. Don't take it as, oh, you, you, you acted funny. It's just boundaries that I need for myself. And she just turned 40. So I'm 43. I told her three years ago I felt different in that sense. Like, she never knew what it was, but I told her. And I, I still don't know what it was. I think it's just <laughs> growth and evolution. But I can't say exactly what it is. But at 40, you just fucking feel different. You just, it's just something about 40 where I don't know whether I started thinking about death a lot mm -hmm. and I started to think about my own mortality and people around me. Like I started to, to, um, narrow down my summers. Like I got 30 summers left and, sh and, and shit like that. Like if you lucky, um, so yeah, when you 40, it's a whole different outlook than 30. And you heard that shit when you were 20 and 30 mm -hmm. and you didn't know what people were talking about. But when you turn 40, there is a change in your body. There is a change in the way that you think. There is a change in the way that you see the world. It's just facts. And I can't say what it is, or I can't even say if that's what she's going through. I think it is, but we don't know. We're still, we're, we're still talking through it. But I kind of feel strongly like that's what it is. Because, again, she didn't say it was nothing negative. It was just out of her comfort zone. And I think yeah. that's what it is. She's fresh 40 in January. So she ain't been 40 for six months yet. <laughs> so I, I kind of know what that feeling is. You start thinking, well, um, should I be doing this? Uh, why am I here? What happened? Like, you know, it's, it's almost like a survivor's remorse um, with a midlife crisis all wrapped up into one. Because mm. you start thinking like, damn, what, what, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Because you kind of feel internally like, I'm 40, I don't have a lot of time left. Like, am I doing the things that, that make me happy? Am I doing the things that I like to do? Or am I wearing all these goddamn hats for everybody else? And that's cool because that's your family and you love them. But there comes a point in time where family, friends, everybody, especially at that age, there's got to be boundaries because you come first. And I, you know what I mean? You, your sisters can't call you for help if you fucked up. I can't lean on you when I'm struggling if you fucked up, if we wear you out. So you got to create some kind of boundaries where it's like, okay, this is, it's tea time. And you know what? You, you hit a lot of nails on the head because I definitely think 
part of you know over the last few years i've been really saying like my peace is priority and as i turned 40 it like like sped up to be like yup th this is exactly and i'm not allowing anything you within my control bullshit. yeah you don't have to time disturb for that because it feels so good to be at peace and peace doesn't mean perfection of course it doesn't mean nothing is going to come up in life or you might not have a stressful moment or you might not even have a stressful day but it's just with things that you can control that you allow to control i learned when you start to manifest peace in your life and you start to move in a way that you you're you only allow things or you only give energy to things that are beneficial to you, that help you improve, that are joyful, that are happy. People don't come to you with bull crap because they realize like you ain't they're not gonna get the response that they want. You're not gonna entertain that. It, you gotta it just, add you, you, value. I'm sorry not to cut you off, but there's a saying you if you don't add value to value, you devalue value. So if you don't have people in your life that's bringing value to it, they're actually devaluing your value. Like, you have to be around me and in my life to make me better. Mm -hmm. And I'll make you better through that, too. If not, then we're both going to go down. And in addition to <coughs> peace me. and priority, I stole his word. This has been my word, bandwidth. Like, some things I just don't have the bandwidth for. Like, some, you know, I, I just, I did. Word. I stole his word because And that it was because fits. I turned 40. Yeah. That was because I turned 40 and I felt like... I don't want things in my life that that I have to give energy to that's going to take away the bandwidth that I have. That's going to make yeah. me stress way past the percentage that I have to give to it. And sometimes I, I feel like, okay, I may not I may not have the bandwidth for something, and it doesn't mean I want to use that bandwidth for to for something else. I just may want to reserve that bandwidth to be empty. Like I think sometimes or put the things in there that I might like you might yeah. like to do like True. this or, some bandwidth for me like okay yeah. I might like to do this or it just may be I don't want to do nothing exactly. and I want to allow this mental bandwidth to, for, for myself for nothing but going back to what you said you hit you hit a couple nails on the head and I don't I guess I it, it does boil down to that and thinking of your mortality I didn't necessarily think of it in that way but I do feel like okay I'm 40 and you start to think like I'm not 20 no more I'm not 25 I ain't 35 and I pray to God that I have longer to live than I lived but you never know. So I, you, I'll start to think like, That's what, a 30 what am I doing at. here? What am I supposed to be doing? And for me, I know this may look different for other people. I want to be able to make God happy at the end. So it starts to, it, it, I start to think to myself, am I pleasing God? Like, am I doing what he intended for me to be? Now he didn't intend for me to be, you know, I don't think he didn't intend for me to be no missionary traveling the world, saving people that I don't think that was my A calling. Sister. He didn't intend, <laughs> right. He, he, you know, there's certain things that I probably can like cross off the list. That wasn't his role for me. And I'm okay with that. But I know that we all, we kind of talked about this last week too, or one of the episodes, we all have a purpose. And for me, I started thinking like, what is that? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing here? Not in a sense of, I don't want to be here. Or if I say, why am I here? Not because I don't want to be here. I'm here and I, I, I want to be here, but I want to be doing what I'm intended to do. And it's weird when you get to a point and you think like, okay, I have a job. It's, I guess it's a career. It ain't, I can't say five years ago, I would have thought, oh, this is my dream career, but I don't have no complaints about my job. It's not one of those things where I feel like it was my life's purpose in the sense that some people are a it's teacher work. or a, a firefighter, carpenter. a carpenter, you know, a social worker, uh, you know, uh, whatever. It's a nurse. My sister's a, a nurse. Yeah. So I don't think it was my light. I, I definitely don't think my job is my purpose, but he has helped me to realize there are certain things that I do in my life where I may be fulfilling my purpose. And I start to think to myself, my interactions with people at work, who knows if if through my job I made whatever it is, that was part of it for me and kind of thinking like, sis, like you 40, what you doing with yourself? Like, 
what, what are you doing? Like we talked about me not going to school and I start to think to my, I, I, for me, I started really like bulleting out things in my head and thinking like, am I like school? Do you want to revisit that again? Nah, I'm sure that I don't. Sorry. Maybe, you know, I, I kind of think about that every now and then just to see if that's maybe there's that something you can be else. But with yourself, though. yeah, it's like, nah, I don't really want to do and that. That's the midlife crisis to think that I should be doing so many things. And it, again, I'm not going to beat you down with what I already said, but I just want to say for the people, she is so awesome. And she has touched people's lives in our circle that would not be who they are, including myself, if they didn't know her. So when she talks about purpose, um, it, that, that's what, what first comes to me. There's there's children and there's a grown adults that if they didn't know Natasha D's, they wouldn't be where they are. I wouldn't be where I am. So that's that's my thought when I when when you say purpose and I and I mean that wholeheartedly. Like people wouldn't be on their feet. People wouldn't probably be out in the world. Uh, some people might be dead. Like. Um, children would be on their way to, you know, not, not good things. It, 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 she has touched so many people's lives, and I just want to put that out there. And I don't think anybody who hears this will disagree that if it wasn't for her, there's a lot of people that just are better for knowing her. And I'm one of them, and I'm, I'm proud of that. So I just wanted to say that. I appreciate that and I, I think sometimes when I, I'm just myself you know I can say um I'll call her my little sister she is my sister's best friend since they were like in the third grade and they're almost 30 now one of the things she's mentioned when she uh she watches the podcast hey Bren she said um I'm she she said to my sister Sierra Tasha's always herself and that's that's a big compliment for me because I try. I, I can't even say I try. Being authentic is so important to me. So I I say that to say when you say those things, it may be something that um I overlook. And I'm sure other people who find themselves in the same situation because it's not like I'm out here trying to do these things. I'm just being myself. Whether I'm praying for you, whether I'm praying Excuse with me. you, whether I'm like, hey, this was my Bible study today. You, that's my way of like easing the Bible. And I'm like, you want to hear my Bible study today? It was real good. But what again, do I tell you? you do. You listen. Yeah. You know, whether it's me sending scriptures to my sisters or, you know, sending, you know, just, hey, have a good day. And I think when you have that recipro recip reciprocity in life with people it feeds your spirit because you're feeding theirs and it, it, it goes back and forth you have people in your life mm -hmm. so it it just becomes normal so i think when you you know you were telling me all these things that you feel that i've done and i appreciate it and i recognize it and i guess i hadn't recognized it because it's like i ain't out it's not like i'm a doctor like all right i'm on call now and they call me for this case i'm just loving on people who i love because I love, that's who, that's who I am. So, and that, that's the thing. It's you come in contact with so many people throughout the day that you may run into that you know are not the same every day. Um, I try to be more of the same of you. Like I try to be the same person every day. Um, but there's so many phony people out there. There's so many bad people out there, ill will people, manipulative people out there. And to be around somebody who is genuinely loving and caring all the time sometimes to the point where it's annoying but you can always count on her to be that way whether she's yeah she's way too emotional sometimes she cries a lot she you know she gets upset at small things sometimes but you know she she's always her and and you can always appreciate that so when and i get why she may feel weight on her because when everybody around her in her circle know that she's like that, that's authentic. You're attracted to that. So you lean on that more. So in her, on her shoulders, it might, it might feel that way. Like, damn, this is a lot, a lot, a lot of people like you. You're popular. People want to be in your presence. People want to hear what you have to say. Um, 
which is why I hired you on the show. Like, <laughs> people want to know your perspective of what you think. And because you're a fun person, if you was an asshole, nobody would care what the fuck you thought about shit. But because you're fun, these topics come up and it's like, okay, like, I wonder what Tosh would think about this. I know that's how I feel when I think about shit. Like, or if I see a comment or I'm looking at social media or something, I don't always come to you with that because I'm not that guy. But I always think when I have a thought about something, what's what's Tasha's thought? I always think that. Nobody else, I always think, oh, damn, I wonder what she think about it. And it could be something from the fucking, they changed the color of now latest to something huge. <laughs> so it could be something real small to something big. But I still want to know, like, what she think about this? Because it's always unique. It's always authentic. And it's always thoughtful. And, you know, it makes me feel good, too, in, in being who I am and being myself and seeing the changes that I've seen in you primarily and hearing other people say it, too. Like, I could I could see the change in Jay. Well, y'all know, y'all who know me know I call him Jay. I can see the change in him. You know, I he he has opened up and blossomed. And it's crazy because this is the person that I've always known him to be for you know a, a multitude of reasons he has never really allowed other people or else i won't say never but very few people to even see a small portion of that where now via this podcast which if you knew him five years ago you would have never imagined that he would be sitting on anybody's camera talking to people to strangers you know but it is what it is so that that makes me feel good in, in knowing that i've had I'm, I definitely won't take all the credit because God gets all of the credit, and I just have been God's uh, conduit. Conduit, but, but I'm here to say it's my, it's my show. It's 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 my passion, my thought. But she's who I learned that from. She's who who gave me the confidence to feel like I could do something like that. Like if I think that I can do that, I mention it to her and and check her temperature. And she, it like like she said in the beginning, if I told her. I wanted to catch frogs for a living. We be catching frogs. Ribbit. And we be trying to be good at it. Like she Ribbit. would be thinking, this nigga wanna catch frogs. Like it's Wednesday again. Like this nigga. I'm gonna paint frogs. my face green so we can but go out there. But she would be down and that's that's just the dope part about her. Yeah. And also like not you know, you um when I was uh you know, Mother's Day was hard, you know, emotionally and I was with my sisters, we were um waiting for my mom and I, you know, had a little moment. And my youngest sister, Sierra, you know, her be, filling in that gap that I would traditionally be for her, you know, her just consoling me, talking to me, you know, rubbing my back. It, it made me feel good because it made me feel like I've, she's learned how to care for people, hopefully through how myself and not just me, but I know I played a part in that and showing her how to show love and how to love on people that you really love. So it makes me feel good in seeing that. Um, my middle sister, um, you know, that's my baby mama. My baby mama harder than a lot of you niggas. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, she's in the process of being a first time home buyer. And if you know anything about my sister, you know that this is all a testament to the goodness and mercy of God himself that he is blessing her life the way that he is. But right. again, you know, just seeing their growth, you know, uh, my sister Toya, she, it, it's one of those things where you have people in your life who, um, what's the saying? Iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. You know, she, you know, anybody who knows me know, I don't know how to read. <laughs> Meaning, I know how to read, of course, but I... The reword that, because this yeah, is out to the man. I can read George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Amon Arbery, Sean Reed, Tony McDade. I happy. I know how to read, but reading books is has never been my thing. I fall asleep like that. But she challenges me in ways. Um, and we had this conversation because you know we recently had some conflict, and it's one of those things when you love somebody and you have somebody in your life who challenges you, and you may not always agree, but they call you on your BS. Y'all talk about it. Y'all go through conflict, confrontation, and you're better for it. Um, you know, she sent me some books. We supposed to be reading books together, but I'm a little behind because she can't really <sighs> focus and read. She's yeah. one of those people that they're good at math and 
language <laughs> arts, but not so I can either. read, but oh my God, it's like a sleeping pill for me. But it's just great to have good people. And not it's just great to have people in your life that help you be better, that you can contribute to their lives. Last thing I'm going to say about this, it's so weird how things come full circle. I remember growing up and my um, sperm donor, he used to say he didn't want no friends in his life that couldn't do nothing for him. And as a kid and hearing that, it sounds so selfish. Like, what do you mean they can do stuff for you? And I used to think that was just so horrible because for him to say. It's it's a it's it's a double standard because you're always taught that true character is how you treat somebody that can't do nothing for you. Right, but but now I kind of get the gist of it. Right. Like you were saying, that can add value. So do something for you, not meaning um, financially or monetarily, but somebody that can add to value. your life. Whether somebody, it's a friend that you can pray with, a friend that you know you you can whatever with, but it's that adding value to your life. So I now get what he was saying in some small way. But it just kind of was one of those things that came full circle. And not just friends, just people in general. You you know, it's so important to have people in your life because you're not going to always be strong. You're not going to always be on top. You're not going to always feel your best. But you have to have people in your life that can help you, help, that can support you through those moments. And it, sometimes it's not about what they say. It's just being there. Like, you know, he's a tough love kind of person. So when I was telling him, like, I'm feeling this kind of way, and I don't really know why I'm feeling this kind of way. I'm just, he's like, well, what you mean? Why you don't know what you feeling? Tell me what you feeling. Tell me what's going on. And it's like, chill. Just be here for me. Hug me. Rub me. He wouldn't give me no sex. But because, again, go back to our souls being intertwined. I'm kind of yeah. crippled when she's down. It makes me sad. It makes me not myself. So. I was telling him sex might help, but no, that I knew. I I respected and loved so much that he took that stance because it wasn't. I, we've never been the kind of people that medicate with sex. Like we don't do the break up the make up sex kind of thing. Like no, no at all. But because, like, we can pick up on sex right back where we left off yeah. after a fight. But during a fight, we can't do that. Nah. Like we can't. We gotta For be in a us, good it's place. that good that we can't, yeah, we can't, we can't, we can't operate like that. We don't move like that. But, again, <laughs> um, you know, just being there for people. And you may be the person that needs to be, th that needs people to be there for you. Or you may be the person that somebody else needs. So, it, you know, it, it flip-flops. And hopefully, I pray that everybody has people in their corner and people in their circle like I have, because that, I'm going to sneak in another one. Well, I kind of said it before, you know, in the last couple of days, that was really, it made me feel good in knowing that I truly am blessed. Like, I try not to complain, and that was, you know, again, having these feelings. It was like, God, I'm not being ungrateful. Like, yeah, I'm not feeling myself, but I'm not being ungrateful for, because I know I'm truly, truly blessed. But in that, it revealed to me uh, more of the blessing that I do have, and that's the people that truly, genuinely love me. If you don't have people, mm. if you don't have people that add value to your life, they devalue your value, period. If you don't have people that add value to your value, to what you call your value, your peace, your center, your hope, they don't add to that, and they come around with negativity or stuff that you don't have bandwidth for, then you get devalued because you're giving bandwidth to something and energy to something that they're making you care about. So just look out for that. Just protect your inner peace. Um, you know, and at a certain age, at 40, again, can't really say exactly what it is, but, you know, it, you just, uh, maybe you're moving closer to God and it's like you know it subconsciously you're not the person who thinks about death like that a lot. I try not to think about it a lot, but I remember three years ago, I thought about it a lot to the point where it would make me sick. Like, don't want to go to sleep tonight sick. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, if like, y'all out there and y'all are for, y'all are 40 and y'all have had a similar experience, leave some yeah, feedback. Leave let some us comments. know. Let, because and let us know if we're talking, yeah, if we're out of pocket or we sound like we're on the moon. But there's something about 40... And again, it makes you feel like it feels so good, right? So it feels so good 
that it's almost like you you want to prepare yourself for 50 because that's going to be even better right so right. that's that's kind of what it feels like like damn this feeling of being because when you you 30 you think you've grown but when you 40 you you pretty damn set in your ways you are who you are your core is there that's not changing yeah, there may be some stuff around you when you find new information you may change about yourself which is cool that's growth that's evolution but you are who you are and when you realize that i think as an individual and you you just see the world different and it changes you it changes you and i don't know what it is but it changes you i remember when you turned 40 you used to always be like i'm 40 i feel different and i used to always be like I know how old you See? are. Like you don't have to keep saying. Like every See? time we would talk about something or go through something, I'm you know I'm just forty now. I don't have time for that. And it, I, he used to always always say it, and I don't find myself having to say it, but it is like an inner feel, an, an innate, innate innate feeling where I'm. I really had like I don't, like a real don't give a f aura that came over me i like zero f's given except about the stuff that i truly care about like the things that i don't i just don't like that that was the aura that came over me at 40 but then you know it kind of transpired like okay <laughs> now my your mind starts playing tricks and like oh so what should i be caring about like i know what i don't need to care about and i know what i do need to care about but is there something else that i'm missing so that's where that whole purpose piece and you know maybe in a future episode we'll go talk more into that but that was where the whole purpose piece kind of fit in like god what am i am, am i doing it right <laughs> yeah. and she's going to be better she's going to get better she's going to create her boundaries i have trust that she'll do that but i'll also protect my wife so just y'all know when, you know, if she not herself, if she not answering calls as often as she is, or if she on do not disturb, she still love y'all. She, she ain't gonna never stop loving y'all, but she needs some her time and she need to get right so she can get y'all right. And we don't want to lose sight of that. We don't want to lose sight of her and let's just stay focused with that so i'm just putting that out there i know she gonna create her own boundaries but i love her so much i'm i'm a protector so and it's weird what you can learn um i remember uh, this was just a couple weeks ago my sister had said something like when this is my youngest sister she was like i just need 24 hours of no human contact she she had just came back from vacation which you know was great she was like her and my other sister were together she's like i'm with my sister then you know i had to go to work then she's like i just need 24 hours of no human contact just to be with myself so i think a lot of people feel it in certain ways and maybe some people feel like it's being selfish to want that but it's absolutely not like you have it's to absolutely recharge. necessary yeah it's absolutely necessary and of and of people speaking of a certain age it's definitely necessary at that age group. And again, people out there who 40 and over, let us know if we're hitting the nail right on the head. Let us know what your feelings are um, when you turn 40. And if you if you felt any kind of change in your, your way of life or the way you saw the world. Mm -hmm. um, getting to the questions. We put some questions up again. Y'all had great feedback, great comments. Um, and we enjoy that. So um, that's pretty cool. We like I'm, to engage I'm, with y'all. Yeah, I'm excited and, to hear um, the response. We're going to keep thinking up some stuff. And um, even, you know, looking at the box, y'all might got some questions, so put some stuff up. But we got a lot to talk about. Um, so our first question was uh, centered around it being Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, mental health questions. So how likely, we asked the people, are you to seek mental health care? Well, I am... 100% likely if I feel need if I feel that it's necessary 100% was the answer 100% of people say yes you know that's so weird because I know which so, and the other three answers kind of yeah because you, you want to call half bullshit but exactly <laughs> because people say that yet I know that there are so many people that will and maybe people's um boundary or their you know uh, limit is different because some people will 
go regularly to seek mental health. And then some people, they got to be having a nervous breakdown. So I guess the good part is that they're saying that they will, Mm -hmm. but at what point? Like, don't go when it's like, okay, now you need medication or inpatient hospitalization because you didn't go earlier to talk through some stuff. So, I mean, it's good that people are saying that they would, but... So, eh. personally, you would seek mental health issues... I would now. We we have had some disagreements, not disagreements. We've just had a difference in opinion. I'll say that. Mm -mm. I think it's a misunderstanding because when she you don't know what I was about to say. It is. I do. I've been married for. Come on now. Okay. All right. She thinks when I say to her, she might need to go to a doctor. She thinks I'm in straight jacket, white coat, and. No, that's not what I was about to say though. Okay. I will seek mental health services. I'm I'm not I have and I'm not opposed to it at all. I am not an advocate for um pharmaceutical treatment for mental health for myself. That. Now, I know that there are some mental health disorders like schizophrenia um If hold on, if you were diagnosed with bipolar disorder would you take medication? If I was diagnosed and it was necessary to maintain my quality of life, I think all I would. those variables are attached. You're you're diagnosed. You have to take this, or you're going to go plumb loco. Are you taking it? Yes, I, okay. I think I would. So, yes, so we're would. on the same page. Where going to see a uh, psychiatrist? A psychiatrist. Prescribes medication. Psychologist. Psychologist that you just talk to. So going to see a psychologist is just just that. Going to talk to somebody that's unbiased, that's going to give you an opinion about the things going on in your life. And they don't know you. <coughs> so they can give a quality informed opinion. That's what that, that setup is supposed to be. Now, when you get to the pharmaceuticals, I only think that that's necessary in agreement with you. Where I say we're on the same page. That if it, if you're diagnosed with a serious mental health disorder, then you should take medication. You that's, should. That's fair. It's because it you could hurt yourself. You could hurt somebody. Um, you could not have a good quality of life, like you said. So, yeah, if not just because you go see a psychiatrist or um, should you take medication, just because they're giving you antidepressants and, and all kinds of stuff like that because you're telling them, oh, I can't sleep or I got insomnia and all this stuff or I do this too much. No, if you have a a, 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 a genuine, like, one of those hard mental health issues right. where, you know what I mean, you can't function unless you're on this medication. There is, well, you know, for my... Where you're manic and you need to come down or you're just so down maybe you need to come up a little bit there are a classification of mental health issues that are classified as serious mental disorders i'm glad i said that right because yeah, i didn't want did. to, to 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 seem like all mental health orders i mean the people with less would, would seem no like no, no. that's a, that's a defined classification like i got anxiety and it's like okay i that's still when it's happening to me if i'm sure it feels like a person who's manic and it's happening to them like just because it's two different things yeah but from a medical standpoint there is a classification that's considered serious mental health disorders versus mental health disorders so right. you were right yeah so okay um, we're on the same page so yeah that was our first question so 100 percent of the people said they are likely to seek mental health um Treat. if necessary i'm happy to hear that i hope that they're telling the truth so second question was have you ever sought mental health treatment you would think that would be 100% too because people are willing to do it. Right. So if you something was wrong with you, you would think they would do it. But no, 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 no. 86% of the people said they seek mental health treatment before, which is a big number. That's a good, yeah. a good number to know that a lot of people out there do self-care and care about themselves. But 14% of the people... But don't say that. Don't say because they have and they don't care about themselves. But what do you, mean? you said it's good to know that people who that have have sought care and care about have themselves. self-care or caring about themselves. oh okay okay i'm sorry are i thought it was kind of implying people who that do people... self-care are caring about themselves i'm not implying that other people aren't okay i'm just saying for the people who do what we do self-care hey how are you am i let me do a check well but mental seeking mental health treatment you went to a professional i was that that was the lot of 
that's what I was thinking. Seek and sort are two different things. I would think seek you would you would look into. Sort I would think you actually went. Do you? Would, well, you wait, what's like the that? question? How likely was the first question? Was no, how, right. What was the second question? Have you ever sought mental health treatment? Right. So that's what I'm talking about. Question number two. That means they've gone to a therapist right. or somebody. Okay. So in that case, then you would think the so if a hundred percent is saying that they would, but fourteen percent haven't. Maybe they haven't felt like they needed to yet. Which I think again, some people's um, limit may be higher than others. So, so that fourteen percent probably be should have with small mental health. They think. So they ain't going yet. Yeah. She ain't on the butter, y'all. She keep fucking. Oh my god, nose. my nose. I need mean, <laughs> clarity <laughs> or whatever it is. And my nose is it's itch. Gonna be I'm in not the sniffling. It's gonna be in the comments. Like, why is she keep fucking? I with think her people nose? who like do cocaine be sniffing it. Like, I'm not sniffing at all. My nose is just. It's on the outside and inside. It feels like little critters. It's it's allergies. If you know me, you know damn well I ain't doing no drugs. All right, so. Uh, 86 and 14. Yeah, so I mean at 14, I hope that you're not dealing with a whole lot and you just are dealing with it instead of seeking help because again, some people's limits, some people may crack a little bit and be like, I need to get help. Some people may crack a lot. Maybe, and I'm not telling nobody what to do because that ain't this type of show. We just talk giving our opinion and perspective but I think that it, it I think it's a better decision to go when you cracking a little bit before you crack a lot yeah because if you start cracking a lot your pieces of you'll be falling the fuck off yeah and you, you won't even show up with all your pieces um okay i feel like the first three should have been 100 percent, but we got 100 percent for the first one so wait 80. you wait you didn't answer for yourself um what would you what, what was the first one would you seek? Would, would you uh, seek mental health services? How likely, how likely are you are to you? seek mental health health care? How likely are you? Hundred percent. Okay. And have you ever sought mental health treatment? No. Okay. Um. So again, you fall into that fourteen percent. So what about then? We know that you've experienced some things that may have warranted it, but what what has stopped you from doing so? Um, circumstances. Okay. I wasn't in a position to seek mental health treatment from professionals at a certain point in my life. Okay. So that's probably why. Um, but I would have went, and I'm 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 better now. I mean, I got better tools now. Um, so, yeah. Um, but at the time, if I could have, I definitely fucking would have. Okay. But I mean, you know, my situation. I didn't. I didn't, I wasn't in a position to be able to, to show up and have ID and you know all okay. that kind of stuff. All right, got you. Number three. Um, do you believe therapy can help? I do. I do. Hold. And you 100% know, percent say yes to. So a hundred percent of y'all think it all can help, but but only eighty six percent of y'all went. I hope that other fourteen percent. That's 14% a small bullshit. <laughs> it's not a big one, but a small bullshit. But and you know what? I think. I mean, even though a hundred hundred percent are saying yes, I know some other people. Maybe they didn't do the survey. Um, Therapy is just like going to any other doctor. Like, you might go to a therapist and you ain't feeling them. Go to another one. That's yeah. like if I went to a dermatologist and I wasn't really agreeing with what they said. Maybe their style or their suggestions, eh, I don't want to put that cream on my face. I'm going to go talk to somebody else. Get a second opinion, yeah. a third opinion. And like, don't let your fucking old school parents like I was try to tell you that psychiatrists are all in cahoots together and they know each other and they talk about all our business. <laughs> they don't fucking know each other. I mean, they ain't talking about each other's business, all our business like that. They don't have shrink parties where they talking about Miss <laughs> Johnson and Miss fucking Wilson. But guess what? If they are, if I have a therapist and she has a therapist friend and she want, and maybe her therapist friend may have a different perspective that she can give her, that she can bring back to me that may help me that my therapist, you know, like two heads is better than one. We talk through a problem, you know. You know, I got this patient and she's going through this thing and I've been trying to get her to do this and blah, blah, blah. And you give me a different perspective. Like, huh, let me try that. And it may work. So them talking about it, talking to each other, I don't care. They don't know me. Right. <laughs> I, and I think that the, the way that that's set up, having an unbiased opinion is the best way. Because, again, we all know through our own experiences, you don't want to tell your family all your business. You don't want to tell your friends because people are judgmental. But 
unbiased and somebody that don't know you or tell you about your shit or tell you you right so that you feel the way you feel. So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, last question. We're going to wrap it up after this. Um, have you ever experienced any mental health issues, i.e. depression, anxiety, PTSD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, you know what? I don't even know if it was... So I went to seek mental health services. I don't know if it was diagnosed as depression. Mine was related to, you know... I guess I was feeling depressed or sadness, whatever you want to call it, about fertility issues, you know, not being able to be a mother. Um, but I don't know what the, what my diagnosis was now that I say that. I mean, I know... They called me. <laughs> they ain't call you about my medical. They told That's me a keep HIPAA it on violation. They told me to keep it on the low. Yeah, whatever. As long as you're going to take care of it, keep it on the low. Whatever. So, I mean, I want to say, yes, I've experienced it. I don't know what my di you know, what my diagnosis would have been. But I think I, de I know that I definitely have experienced, you know, some depression in some um, moments of life. Yeah. What was the, what was the responses? 96, 94%. 94% say um, yes, and 6% wow. say no. Okay, so let's think about this. 94% say yes, 6% said no, but 14% mm -hmm. have not sought medical treatment. So that 8% of y'all that have experienced those, but you haven't sought mental health treatment, please go talk to someone. Because you're walking around, you might not know it, but you're probably depressed, you have anxiety, you have PTSD, and that stuff, those those considered small mental health issues will fester and turn into major mental health issues. And it just can improve your quality of life. You know, I, I read something. To one the time. point where you might not have to take a pill every day. You might can use the tools that a psychologist can give you to deal with your anxiety. You might can use the tools that somebody can give you to deal with your PTSD. But if you, that stuff goes untreated, then you get to a point where now you need medication because and, you, you got an imbalance. And if, you, if you're one of those people, like let's say you deal with depression and maybe you found something in your life to help coax those feelings to, you know, where you, you aren't feeling like that at the moment, but you have to remember if that thing is tangible and that tangible thing goes away or is taken away, where does that leave you? Because you now you haven't developed the tools to help you work through those things. You're using something else to coax those feelings or to help you get by or to, you know, create some happiness in your life. And I, I don't want to be narrow minded because I don't know. I mean, the, the responses were what they were, but I don't know <coughs> who has dealt with what. But I think it is extremely important, um, you know, to seek professional help because, again, not all therapists are the same. I had a great experience. Not all leg doctors are the same. Yeah. I, did you say leg doctors? Yeah, I'm just saying. Not not all titty doctors. Y'all, when y'all <laughs> women out there change up, not all gynos are the same. So y'all don't like a gyno, y'all switch him quick. Well, how Switch you know it's all ladies? What about men? All testicle doctors ain't the same. They not. I was going to get to that. Okay, I just want to make sure. I was just talking sure. to the ladies. All ball doctors ain't the same. So, All you know, barbers ain't the same. I mean, that ain't a doctor, ain't but, all you know. All hairstyles, you're getting a little out of pocket. All right, but I'm just saying, Joan, don't, don't just be isolating to women. But all, you know, you kind of stuck with your own heart surgeon and shit. They kind of give you who that is. I don't think you got a choice of picking heart surgeons. It's kind of like, he show up, he the surgeon. <laughs> it's not like you get a list. And it's like, I want that well, guy. Well, you, you can go see or a you say, cardiologist. I my, my first heart surgeon, I didn't like him. I want another guy. You kind of want the same guy who's been in the first time. Because he know what the fuck going on in there. Right? All right. Yeah. I, no? You want a different guy the second time? No, I agree. But I think heart surgeon was just really pushing it out there a little bit. just saying all doctors ain't the Maybe same. Maybe a dentist. Dentist is good. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I like our dentist, but you didn't like her. I didn't. But I like my PCP doctor. Yeah. You need to get with her. I like mine. Stop script. going it on. Stop. What? It's not white, and you know that. Stop going it on. Like skin people. Don't goodbye. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Do not disrespect my doctor. You gonna say shh like I was gonna say his name? I thought you were. Really? 
That's when a HIPAA I, violation. That's <laughs> not, that's not good doctor that is, etiquette. That is. That's a HIPAA violation. I ain't gonna be telling them what oh, doctors oh, oh. is. My nose. My nose. Is itching. <laughs> We appreciate it. Act to the podcast. That was great conversation. Again, this is around mental health awareness month, which is wrapping up soon. So we wanted to get this episode out to um, address that and just know that we being transparent with y'all. I've had some mental health issues. She had some mental health issues. Again, um, having some changes and you don't identify what they are doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing. Not until you get identification or you know exactly why you feeling sad then you can approach it the way you should but everybody out there that's got mental health issues anxiety ptsd um schizophrenia manic depression all that stuff like let's just this is the month where everybody in the community you know just just go get checked out talk to people check on your loved ones people who you care about who you might think um need a break, need somebody to talk to. Um, it's summertime. Everything is opening back up. And people are scared. People are weary. Um, we just was locked in for 18 months. So just the country needs some empathy. So have some empathy towards people because um, you never know who's walking around with what, who done what, who been through stuff. There's been some people who killed themselves during the pandemic because of mental health issues. Um, so, you know, if you don't want yourself or your loved ones to go that far, you know, check on people, do self-care, um, ask people how they doing and really be prepared for them to tell you how they doing. Because if you say it sincerely, you got to be prepared. It's not just a pass and go thing. Hey, how you doing? And they supposed to be, you know, I'm fine. Because if, if you really care and you really ask them how they doing, be prepared for, for them to say some harsh stuff or some serious stuff. Or um, just be a, just be be prepared to to listen to them because you did ask how you doing. And you know what? And be prepared if you're the one being asked. Be um, okay with saying I'm not okay. You know. And for those who a family member, a friend, a loved one may tell you they're not okay, don't think that you got to know all the right things to say or the right things to do. Sometimes it, the best thing to do is to ask them, how can I help you? Is there anything I can do? How do you need me? What can I do to be there for you? So I think that's important. Like, don't feel like, oh, I can't help. I want to give a disclaimer. We are not mental health professionals. No. We are not telling people what to do. We're we are making suggestions experience. and giving yeah. opinions from our perspective. But I think it's just really important if someone is not okay, be okay with saying I'm not okay. And if someone tells you they're not okay, don't try to fix it in the ways you think are best because you you what may work for one person may not work for the other. The best way to help is to simply ask, communicate. How can I help you? Is there anything I can do? Um, but be willing because they may, you know, somebody might say, and, and I'm not saying this is the wrong thing, you know, you might have a friend who says she's not okay and, you know, I, I just need you to come see me. I just really need to, uh, a hug. I need to talk to somebody. Well, guess what? If I had a friend that said that and it's, you know, midnight, I can't leave my bed with my husband and say, you know, I got to go do this. But j just learn how to work through helping those people that you love and being there for them. And set boundaries for yourself when you do feel like you're not okay. Communicate. Let people know. Because holding it in won't help anybody. Holding it in will suppress those feelings. And like I said, you'll be in a supermarket. Somebody will hit the back of your ankle with a cart and you will go ballistic. They will manifest into you bigger. you just like yeah. letting out all this rage. And you'll be crying in the middle of the market. And people will be like, damn, like she's the lady says sorry. And you just like, yeah. And it ain't. You know, it ain't that deep. Yeah. But it can be that deep. Yeah. So, you know. One thing out. we do know for sure, we're not healthcare professionals, but one thing we do, and this is where my tough love comes into play. If you don't do nothing about it, shit's going to spiral out of control. I don't know what that looks like to each individual, but if you have a problem and you don't address it, one thing is for sure is it's going to spiral out of control. Period. And that looks different for everybody, for everybody's problem. Everybody's spiral out of control is going to look different. But when you don't address a problem, when you don't address something that's sick, it gets worse. 
period. Yeah. End on that. Act 2, the podcast, episode 19. Next fucking week, we got 20. We got fucking 20. We got fucking 20. Episode 19, we signing off. Um, we appreciate y'all. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate the likes. We're humble. Just had to get a little hype right there because, um, you know, we just had enough heart and enough balls to sit up here 20 times. And it just means something to us. So uh, appreciate y'all. Appreciate the engagement. Got a lot more to come. Um, yeah. Act 2 the podcast, episode 19. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you should. Peace.